Hey, welcome back to Matchball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, it's currently the 12th of July. We're in the casual lobby in Jutekey.net. This hand's like... Mm, let's high roll this. Uh, so we're playing a new deck. A deck that I've actually never tested before. Good luck, have fun. Thanks, you too. Uh, I wanted to put in some more content this week, but Jutekey.net was down last night, so apologies for that. Uh, but we are playing a bunch of new cards in the deck. Uh, just I haven't tried. It's a bit of a fast advanced deck. It's really not optimized, but we're going to see how things are going to go. Uh, we are playing against Noise, which is always scary. I think we want to ice, ice everything. Uh, this card is cool to have on HQ. Trash one icebreaker is not that good against noise. Noise generally doesn't run that many icebreakers. And we're playing War Eye Tracker, which is the best thing we have so far. Uh, it's really good against Parasite, so I think that's pretty cool. But let's just ice up some servers. Uh, we are going to be able to... Oh, sorry, noise. Uh, sound. We are going to be able to ice up archives, but none of these actually end the run, which is not that great. We want to score behind this, so let's put this on R&D. We'll put this on HQ, and we only have to res this one. If it comes to it. So this deck is running War A Tracker. It's also running a bunch of other really strange upgrades to build like a mega server. We are running Mumbad Virtual Tour, which is cool. If the runner hits this, they have to trash it and then War A Tracker might fire. I think actually these cards are a bit anti-synergistic together because you always trash the War A before you're accessing the other card. But at least we may be able to drain a lot of money out of the runner and that's kind of cool. Uh, Input at the top gets an agenda. And they're running here into an Eli. I think we're definitely going to res this. Just because uh, we don't want them to get an access onto the top card of R&D and trash it with the Imp. Imp is a really strong card. Uh, there's a chance actually we could put the Fairchild on Archives. It's not that bad. It's a bit expensive. Um, and that's generally not that great. Again, the War Eye Tracker helps against Parasites, which is kind of nice. Oh, they're running HQ here. So we res this. They can't access any cards, which is cool, but we go down to zero credits, and Trash One Icebreaker does nothing, so they're going to imp one card in their hand. All these are really good targets. They hit the Fairchild, and they're definitely going to imp that, so that really sucks. Oh, we're running Sweep Sweep in this deck. I'm not sure why. It's not particularly good, and we just had two influence at the end, and I thought, like, okay, whatever. Alright, let's go. So we have a Helion beta test. Uh, this is only when they trash an installed card. Oh wait, if the runner trashes an Access Corp card during the last turn. Oh, so we actually could fire this off. Play only if the runner trashes an Access Corp card during their last turn. So we can trash the Imp, and we can trash the Street Peddler. I think that's actually totally worth doing. We only have to make it Trace 4? Yeah, let's do this. Man, this card's cool. Right? That's all it says. Yeah, we're playing two of these. This is kind of a big point of the deck. So we have to make it Trace 4, so we'll pay two more. So we pay basically three credits to trash two of their cards. That's really good. And we're going to trash the Street Peddler. Oh, non-program cards. Oh, it's not going to trash the Imp. Oh, we goofed that. I don't think we should have done that. Oops. Uh, Alright. Not going well. We got rid of a Parasite, which is cool. We got rid of an Inject and the same old thing. Getting rid of the same old thing is nice. Getting rid of the Parasite is actually pretty good, because if they play Cipher or Data Suckers, they can immediately instant Parasite things, and we don't want to deal with that. Uh, having a Jackson on the table is okay. If they run it, we'll fire it. Yeah, so... What do you want? I think we definitely want this back, so we'll pull back. Oh, we'll pull back this operation because it's really good. We'll pull back the agenda. We'll pull back the money. This deck is light on money. If we leave inside here Fairchild 3.0, uh, we can always friends in high places it back. And I hope they use their imp token on a sweep sweep or something. They got our friends in high places. Fuck. They're going to imp that. Those are two really good hits for them. Um, The ice that we needed to score. And uh, that's largely it. Yeah, we misread the text on Helium beta test, and now they know we're playing it, and that's really good if we want to start, like, smashing out uh, wild sides and stuff like that. That's a really powerful card. Alright, Manta Grid's also really good. If we have that in the server and they access it and can trash it, which they can't really afford to do right now, I think we'll actually play this into a new remote. If they play an Imp and run it, it's going to be bad, but if they don't and they hit this, we'll actually get a... I don't think they run this, that's a problem. Like, if they run it, it's because they have Imp. But if they do run it, we'll probably be able to score out this agenda for two points, which is really good. And we lost another Halion beta test. Now they could hit this. Oh, we lost a Sand Sand as well. That Friends would be good at this point in time. Okay, so if the runner's fused, six credits or no one's been clicked when a successful run on this, so they have to trash this. If they don't trash this, uh, we'll get a score and agenda from hand. So it's basically they have to spend five credits here. That's the combo is you play this on top of your War Eye Tracker, and if your friends on high places these back together, it's actually pretty sweet, because it's a really expensive server, and they really have to trash this, otherwise we're going to score from hand. But I don't know if they can afford to go down to two credits. I don't know. That's most of their money. So they do trash it, so that's good for us. We have an Architect, which is good. That's actually really good to put on Archives. Um, Waroid's good, too. 
And another injection is actually pretty sweet. So let's put this on archives. I think we actually want to draw once more. Uh, no, we're probably short on money. Let's click for credit. So this might look like they've milled something important. And if they hit this, it's really good because we can rebuild the War A tracker. We can rebuild. These are both grid regions, so you can't put them on top of each other. Okay, so they just have a levy. They lost an imp, and they have an Aaron Moran, and they lost a Parasite. And Shahrazad's coming out, so we need to get a Helion beta test online. They also do have one of these, a paperclip, so they can get through the Eli if they want to. And we can't really score these out. Drawing with Jackson doesn't seem great, but they can't really contest it. We'll find an ice to put on top of it, don't worry. Uh, that's not an ice, but we can put this on it, which is good, because otherwise we can trash some of their stuff. Uh, sometimes trashing their stuff isn't that bad, specifically if they want to um, get viruses into the heap, maybe, to deja vu them back. But generally they want to hit with Aesop's Pawn Shop, and that's the Aesop's Pawn Shop. Data stuck on the table, so running centrals is good, and this did protect that. Uh, we can put the tour on top of it. They're going to start their next turn with five credits, which is interesting but i think we're okay and that's really good let's drop with jacks um sorry yeah with jackson and now we can ice this thing up that's really good because now it's actually pretty hard and in theory we want to put these things together on a server uh i think we need the money so I'll put this in a new remote if they hit this with an imp it's totally fine like i don't mind we just want to make sure we have enough ice to go on every server this this program mind you i'm trying instead of ichi and ichi would have done so much more work this game just because all the subroutines on each year are relevant, and this one has almost no relevant subroutines. They're not running a lot of icebreakers. Their icebreakers can come back if they're trashed. Uh, the Trace 4 can't access is okay, but it's, like, you know, just okay. I think we actually might want to push for an agenda here. So we'll res that Maryland campaign. And I think we want to overscore one of these Vitruvius, because that's a really good agenda. So do we use the Jackson? I don't think we do. I think we actually just let the Jackson go. Um... Yeah, and then we can do install. Yeah, we can do install. They have, they're going to start to turn with five credits. And if they click through this, yeah, we have to put two of these on here, so it's okay. So we'll do install, advance, and we'll put this also in front of server three. I think they're more likely to run one of these central servers, just to make us spend money so they get data sucker tokens. Uh, that's probably how they're going to go. They also could deja vu for two cash this turn. They likely have the, at least one deja vu. That's generally a three of in these decks. And there you go. That's a deja vu of the top. I think it's going to be cash, cash. So maybe using this Jackson was silly, but we really need to get this agenda out. And they're less likely to be able to run this server. I also hope. Oh, they're pulling an imp back. If they imp this, that's cool. I'm cool with that. Um, We lost a hedge fund. Oh, man. If we can trash this somehow. So they're trashing that. That's fine. We'll just shuffle it back in. It does deny us six credits, though, and that's totally, like, I think the right play. So if we score this, it's going to put us on... Yeah, it's, we're going to do it no matter what. So now at any point in the game, we have access to Helion Beta Test, and they have to respect that. Because we can trash our wild side, and if we trash our wild side, that goes in the entire economy. And that's a really big deal. I don't think they're... Sorry, not wild side, pawn shop. And on that note, I don't think they're playing wild side. I think they're actually playing Aaron Moran for card draw. They do have a lot of money. They might go for a face check here. If they hit the Architect, that's actually super good for us. That will fire. Uh, if they go HQ, I don't even think we res, which is pretty shitty. I don't think we res. And another Deja Vu. I think they're just going to sit back. Which is okay for us. If they hit this, they have to trash it. If able. So it uses an Imp token. It forces out an Imp token. And they're just milling cards. They're over MU here. I don't know if they realize that. Yeah, they're over one MU, so they gotta trash something. They just trashed a cash, which is not, like, the perfect um, efficiency. Okay, so these two are good together. I think we need money. I think we're gonna build these two in a server, because we can then use this to trash our pawn shop. They likely are keeping a pawn shop in hand if they're playing around our stuff. But we'll put this in a new remote and put this in the new remote. So if they hit this, they're going to have to pay 5 credits, or they can use an imp token, and it matters on the order that they hit the things. Um, and yeah, it sort of matters on the order. Just like I thought, this deck is a bit light of money. Oh, they threw out a run amok. They have a run amok. And run amok is super cool. Hack to this meeting on the table. Run amok is super cool when it comes uh, with uh, War Eye Tracker. So let's see what order they access things. They have a lot of money, mind you. They are just like playing back, and I think that might make sense. So they get it, they access the Mumbed Virtual Tour first, so they're actually going to imp that, so good for them. 
And we need to score an, uh, an agenda because that hacktivist is online. I think that means they're going to run amok this server, but even if they run amok this server and this fires, it's good. Like, I'll pay six credits. I think next turn we push out another Project Vitruvius and it puts us on game point. Drawn up with Aaron Moran. HQ's not looking so good. And they're drawing up. They're looking for something. I think it's breakers. Because right now the only breaker they have in their bin is a paperclip. And that's generally... Oh, there's an MKUltra. So maybe they're interested in face checking now. Oh, wow. Oh, fuck. Well, actually, there's a lot of ice in our deck left, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's still about eight to nine pieces of ice. So scoring this is actually not too bad. It also lets us click for credits, which is good. Because we're going to need the money. And I think we'll definitely fire this. Oh, we probably wanted to advance this once, but I think we'll definitely fire just because we have a Vitruvius token. Admittedly, it's bad if we pull with the Vitruvius token and agenda into archives. Uh, I mean, into HQ. And to run a mucking the server, which is fine, because if this thing fires, it's bad. Like, it's going to sap their turn regardless. Oh, also, we could res Warroid Tracker here, thinking. One second. Hold on. Because we'll do a Trace 4. It's not worth it, because we trash a card from hand. All good. Because this is technically trashing a card, right? And Warrior Tracker fires on the trash. So they're clicking through it. So now this one's going to hit. Yeah, it's most of our money. But this is actually a pretty mean hit. We're definitely going to end the run on this one. Okay, so this one gets trashed. Oh, do they choose? Trash one piece by side. It doesn't really matter. So they're just going to trash some cards. I think this one they pay three credits. We'll end the run there. Oh, that's a data sucker, actually. That's a pretty big deal. Okay, scoring this puts us on little credits. Uh, arguably too few credits. Oh, yeah, we're running huts in this deck. But if we score this, there's a chance that we'll get ice. We gotta fire these. Clear the hacktivist. All right, Macrophage is really good. And we lost another Jackson and her friends. Oh, that's abysmal. If we put this on our ID, it looks like we don't have agendas in HQ, but I think they're going to go HQ next turn. We have no economy. We also could use a Vitruvius token just to pull a card back from hand, but I think next turn we'll pull a Jackson and just fix our hand. If we have one more end to run ice on here, and this one, mind you, doesn't do much, uh, we can consider scoring at. I can't believe Noise has so much money. We have so few little money. We just don't have enough money in this deck, and we're running pretty expensive ice. Seven for home guard is probably too much. I'd much rather play five for that Ichi. And this is a big deal for their deck. Uh, we haven't seen a console yet, so there's a chance we're running one or two copies of Cipher. A Cipher, and then that's an issue. But if they can't run R&D anymore. They really can't. Unless they break this or beat the traces, and these are some really good traces. Same old thing also is probably same old thing run amok. Same old thing Deja Vu is also something. Could be same old thing Hacktivist, but same old thing run amok seems like the best thing they've got going. Maryland's good. Maryland is pretty good. If we put that in the server, let's draw once. Oh, that's cool. I just don't want them to play Hacktivist. They might run and click through this. They also might same old thing run up. Oh, same old thing run amok does nothing on the server. So the question is what we do for our last click. Because ideally we're going to, yeah, let's let them same old thing Hacktivist. I don't mind actually. I'd rather have them do that than same old thing uh, run amok. Same old thing running muck is pretty scary. There's also a slight chance that we could push down an agenda here. And they won't check it. I don't think they will check it. And let's see. They have a lot of cards in the heap. Like, they've gone pretty fast. Uh, two Parasites out already. We didn't have to deal with that. That's really good. This deck is running three Architect, I though, think, which is great. Um, two Deja Vu out, which is pretty good. Second I've had worse. They're looking for their breakers. I think they're just looking for the Kogi breaker that they desperately need. I'm pretty sure we could have got away with an agenda here. As soon as we res this, though, it's going to take the server up for a couple turns, which isn't ideal. Oh, there you go. That's a black orchestra for two credits. I think they might face check now, and they're going for it. Fantastic. And this is nine credits to break, if they want to break all of it. Uh, I think we would have res the war, right? Maybe not. Three, six. That's not enough. They have to pay one more just to the way that the strength uh, boosts. Okay, so they they understand how it works, so they're going to let us fire one. So I think they just trash a card. Maybe they just trash the same old thing. Oh, they trashed the clot. Fantastic. And now they can access two cards. So I'm actually going to res the Warrior Tracker, because I think it'll get value here. 
So now they can choose not to trash anything. Um, but if they don't, like, they have to do the Warway Trace 4. I think that's the right place to access. Oh, maybe it's not the right play to access the other one. Maybe it isn't. I'm not entirely sure. Because the idea is if you trash, now that they access the Maryland campaign, if they want to trash it, they have to do two Trace 4s, assuming they want to trash a Warway Tracker. This card's devilish. Oh, they're just letting us have it. Oh, Trace 4. That didn't fire. Okay, it's Trace 4, so we're not going to boost it. The runner chooses which cards they trash. This card's really good. We paid two credits, and they've already spent four on this. They probably are going to spend four more unless they want to trash. Yeah, they just spent eight credits while we spent two. And we obviously also got to run out of them. Like, this card's so good. If you friends in high places, two of them in the same server, oh my god. And now they've thrown out another Aesop's. So only eight cards left in their stack that I think they're going to run out of money. It's also a prime turn to do a Helion beta test, if theory, if we pull this. If we res this, we stay even on credits, so no reason not to. Oh, we are running an Ichi. I think it's maybe one home guard. But the idea here is we could, in theory, like credit, pull a Project Vitruvius for um for a Haleon beta test. Uh, hopefully install this, actually. I think we're going to install this no matter what. Yeah, that seems good. So we'll put this in server 3. So now if we pull anything and do the Haleon beta test, we can trash two cards. It's our choice, right? This guy's will take one bad place. You trash two installed non-program cards. So we can trash the pawn shop, which is going to get some value because they can reinstall this card over and over again. So the pawn shop's worth trashing. This is also worth six credits. I think it's actually worth doing. Trashing the same old thing is also pretty good. Because if they have a levy in hand, I'm not counting influence. That They probably have influence for a levy or lab axis. And then that's something. I don't know. I think it's going to fire another time. Because what is this? It's only a card they access. So if they trash ice, it doesn't count. They also know this is an upgrade, which is good. If they hit it, it's good for us. Do we do it? Sorry, we got to write thinking. Because we do, what do we do? We, do we credit? Yeah, I think we get rid of this. So they have six less credits. Get rid of this. Because then they need the last pawn shop. Which they probably have. But how much money are we spending? We have to spend at least trace four. So we're going to spend three credits altogether. Putting us on two credits, which is obviously not great. Eh, let's try it. Let's try Oh, no, we need that for a Jackson. That's our last Jackson. Okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, I'll just take credits. Now at least we can maybe res this. We've really, like, that one card cost them eight credits. I think they could have trashed things. Oh, cash gets on the table. That's more money. It's going to be another six credits. And they milled an accelerated beta test, which is obviously very good. Cool thing about Manta Grid, though, is that also if this one ever fires, uh, we get to, um, uh, we get to, uh, like, pull back a 3-2 from the bin with a Vitruvius token. And it's another clot. That's fine. And they lost an Eli. We only have 12 cards left in RD. That is an hacktivist meeting. Uh, so we can't really Biotic out here. If we purge, we don't get a lot of value. We're running two with this card. We thought it'd be cool. cool. Um, it's cool to put this in Archives too, but we only have one agenda in there, so like, not that big of a deal. I think we actually want to get our San San City Grid back, but money. So all servers are looking pretty good. I think we just need to push out. If we push out, they can click through this, so we need the other piece of ice that they can't click through, but this actually does nothing. It does very little more accurately. This one's cool because they can only access one piece of I one card, so if they don't break it, which I don't think they do, maybe they do, maybe they pay six, but I don't think they do. Uh, that means that if there's a Manta Grid in here, yeah, if there's a Manta Grid in here, uh, it'll fire and we can score the Vitruvius. So I think this is okay. I think we'll push next turn. I'm pretty sure if they don't install another virus, which they're likely to, that they're actually going to sell the cash and then maybe next turn sell the clot. But I, so far, we haven't shown a single biotic, and we've had the clot hasn't been on the table for that long. Also, we could be pushing the food out, right? Install advance advance on the food. I think that actually might be the play next turn. Uh, Deja Vu is coming out. They're going to get a lot more money. So that's a cash coming back. That's another cash coming back. Ow. Lost another virus. Could be playing Hades Shard. We are not entirely respecting it. We lost our second Helium beta test. Only nine cards left in R&D. So no matter what, I think we have to use the, this token, which is so damn good. We have to use it for... Uh, oh, that's great. So let's install advance of this. 
I think that's okay. Install. Shuffle Maryland campaign, please. Advance and an IPO. Puts us on a lot of money. If they somehow run this and don't have the four credits, which I think they will, uh, it also makes it easier for Mantic Grid to fire. That being said, they have 19 credits. So uh, I think we're just feeding them an agenda, which is good because we don't want exactly want to score this one. It's not going to help us win. And I'm ra I am like it if they run through both of these eyes. Oh, run amok on this server. <laughs> They're playing a couple of these. That card's cool. So, um, yeah, fuck it, we'll res this. So you can only access one card, that's cool. Again, a worry tracker in this would fire with the run amok. <laughs> run amok's cool. It's pretty expensive though, but they seem to have the economy, and that's because they're not interacting with us a lot. I think we should have pushed them to the next turn. So we're firing all of these. Alright. So you can only access one card. That's cool if you have an Ash in this server. I don't even think we're running Ash. I took it out just so we can try more weird cards. Okay. So they can click through this, which means they have to, if they want to steal the agenda. Oh, I guess they can just jack out and run again and break this instead of clicking through it. And that's interesting. This card's kind of cool. Kind of cool. It's unfortunate that Ravana is just like honestly probably better. Uh, same cost and everything. It's more functional uh, than Hudson, but I love the idea on Hudson. I wish we see Hudson 2.0. And it's actually proper good. Yeah, right. They jack out. This gets trashed. So I now think they just go back and pay nine. And that means they can get through both of these. Do we res this to mill a card? I don't think we do. We're also running a second friends, which we haven't milled yet. Oh, I'm going to move my face. All right, they're going for it. So this is going to be an expensive run. It's going to be six with this, another four with that. That's called a scoring window. You probably just trash the cash or the clod. Either way, it's three credits to them, right? So thinking if we res this has fewer than six credits and no clicks, no, it does nothing. So they can spend four for that. That'll put them on the six credits. Aaron Moran does get tokens, though. They only have five cards left in their stack. Let's assume they have everything. Do they trash the Manta Grid? They might actually. I don't know. With the Hacktivist online, they might not think that it's necessary. This is also like a decent turn to play at. Oh, they didn't trash this. So Helion beta test doesn't go off. It has to be a card you access, so Run Amok doesn't work. I don't think. Yeah. They're still drawn up, looking for something. If the levy's trapped under here, it's actually really bad for them, if, unless they have another deja vu or same old thing, and they probably have one of each. No, they have all the same old things in the bin. So if there's a deja vu and a levy on here, that's the rest of their, that's all their deck. That's it. And it looks like they're using a deja vu for a cash and a cash. That's noise stuff, huh? The friends would be really good. Oh, another mailing campaign. All right. So they have four credits. They can always click through this. Uh, if we put this on here, it's okay. It's not fantastic, actually. I think we have to go for it. Again, Haiti Shard, we're not entirely respecting. Scoring this does nothing for us, and that's like the biggest issue that we have. Okay. We might actually want to keep this in hand, just so running HQ is not as good. Home guards really out, let, out, let us down. Maybe just home guard on HQ is bad. Home guard on a remote would probably be a lot better. They drew up their last card. What's the chance their levies on their street peddler? Pawning the Aaron Moran. I think that's it. I think they're going to have no more deck if they're not running a levy. And that's a grimoire. So maybe the medium comes down. Maybe parasites come down. A big old cash comes down for more money. That was maybe the last card in their deck. I'm glad they're not running Cipher. But they probably don't have the influence in. That's another thing. Oh, they're just going to mill us out. That's okay. We're not going to resist because we lose a card from hand. Single Biotic would be good. I think we'd purge by now. Like, they've used all their Deja Vus. This Claude isn't coming back. Oh, they have a levy. Okay. Well, here we go again. Noise, huh? think we just don't have enough money. If we had slightly more money, we'd be comfortable. Uh, that's the third agenda. So now we do lose to Hades Shard, and they have the MU for this. We're not going to res that. Oh, 
Okay, well, not a lot we can do here. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's only one more food in our deck. We can't really afford to score it. Four cards in R&D. They install four viruses this turn we lose. And they could do that. Uh, they'd have to basically do it every single click. So like Street Builder has to be a virus, and then all three cards in their hand have to be viruses. And we just lose the game. Because we didn't go fast enough. This ice, though, it's really good. Uh, we'll definitely res this. I may trash it for free, but like I want another card in R&D more than anything else, I think. I think that's correct. They'll likely imp it. If they imp it, it means it won't run HQ this turn. It's unlikely they'll run HQ. I think they just go archives here, and they can break the architect. Oh, all right, parasite. Uh, inject gets them an imp, a same old thing. Fine. All right, we have to get a Jackson out. There's no question about it. We just have to. Otherwise, they install two viruses, we lose the game. And they can easily install two viruses. They have a deja vu in hand, right? I think we lost no matter what. We need a 3 2 agenda in there. So we don't want to draw with this. I think we just want to shuffle. Now this is only six to break. This does arguably not that much. All right, what's going back in? We want a Jackson. Done two agendas, I guess. You could actually put a Friends in, which might be better than a Jackson. I think a Friends is better than a Jackson. No, we'll do one agenda Jackson's and a friend's. Ah, think about that. We actually could have drawn ones because there might be a thing in there. We got to hit the friends on the top. Oh, we did. Okay, cool. So this might look like, because there's face down cards, it might actually look like we're putting a Jackson back in the server and they have to run the server. And we get another card. Um, Sans and City Grid does very little. We actually could put this in a new empty remote and I'm okay with that. Just like install this in a remote. We also could put a piece of ice on the server. Um, I think they might think this is a Jackson and run it. Oh, we got a really kind of bluff here. This is no good if they have a Claude on the table and we don't have a Cyberdex Fire Suite. Oh, actually, maybe we do have one. No, we don't. Hmm. It's good with Warrior Tracker. Sort of. Uh, so I think actually we just put an agenda in a new remote. Whatever. They have to hit both of these servers, and that's difficult. It also means if they're running both of these servers, they're less likely to install four viruses. Which I don't think is in the realm of possibility, but maybe. They probably think this is another Jackson. So they have to run this, install a data sucker, run this, run that, and we lose. Like they, if they run all three of these things, we lose. Yeah, I don't think they know that there was Jacksons. Street Peddler for an imp. All right. So I think I'm going to try and trash everything. Same old thing on the table. Okay. Three cards left in RD. A lot of agendas in there. Run amok with the same old thing. So we're definitely going to res that. All right. So this is five credits, and it's actually a pretty big hit. They can install their MK Ultra. They could install their MK Ultra. No matter what's going to be expensive, they can't really click through it. The trace I don't think we pump into. There's not much like we care about. But like there's a couple options here. We can trash the data sucker. We can obviously trash this, but you only reinstall this for two credits. So I think it's actually better to install the trash the data sucker, which saves them three credits. Fire all. Oh, we gotta think about this. Oh, we definitely trash the Shaharazada. Oh fuck. This is good. So now it's a bunch of money to get through this. Now there's no real point raising the Manta Grid. Because I think all the three twos are in the bin. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's a trace here. So this is, we have six of them. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's no way that we're going to top deck uh, a Vitruvius. 
So there's no actual reason of resing the Manta Grid, because we're not going to get value out of it. I think we break even here. So let's see here. Do they pay? They can't really get through this. Oh, they could. No, they just don't have enough money. I think we got it. I think we have it. Ooh. Ooh, this Ichi was good. They say GG. In theory, it might be. I think so. Uh, good game. All right. Barely pulled it off. Three cards left in R&D. Wow. Uh, manage that. So this was an agenda, and this was an agenda. I think this one would have gone through. Three cards left in R&D. I don't have perfect information. It's a Ravana. That would actually be a good card to draw. A Warite and a Jackson. So this deck is a bit flawed, but like you see the power of certain cards. We didn't get to show them off. Manta Grid's interesting. Uh, they actually accessed in the right order of the Mumbai Virtual Tour, so that was kind of cool. But Rory Tracker seems really good, and a bunch of these cards together seems great. There's a bunch of energy synergy in this deck, like it needs to be ironed out. Admittedly, these are two regions, and so that's not good. You almost always access Rory Tracker before you access the Mumbai Virtual Tour, uh, because you want to trash this before you trash other cards. But if they don't, that's really good, but I think they almost always will. But being able to like pull back Helling on beta test by having Vitruvius tokens or even playing Archive Memories, maybe even playing Reclamation Order is probably very good because we're playing a lot of cards that must be trashed. The issue right now is we have his money and we're probably playing too much wacky ice. Like, I'm not sure we need the Hudson. In theory, Hudson's super good. Like, imagine a turn where you have Hudson and they run through it, click through it, don't access the Warroid, and then access this. That's kind of the dream. Uh, if that ever happens, I'll lose my mind. But, uh, Thanks so much for watching. We'll get to work on this deck. Just want to try out some of these new cards. Home Guard let me down, but this is not the normal sort of deck. Generally, people run Icebreakers, and a 5-strength Sentry is not too bad at all. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, we got more videos coming out on this channel. Sorry we haven't been putting out a lot of content. JNet was down last night, which kind of goofed the schedule. But otherwise, we're streaming Thursday, 8.45 Eastern, which is tonight, generally. Uh, hopefully see you there. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Ciao.